Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are planting all of these beautiful echinacea. They're all going out onto the new property and I think they're the perfect plant for that space because they're an incredibly low maintenance perennial and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're gonna add some really pretty color. They usually start blooming right around June at some point and go through the rest of the season. Let's start with this one first because I think this is my favorite out of all of the five varieties we have here. This is called Supreme Cantaloupe. Look at the structure of that bloom, it's so fluffy. When they start out, a little bit more fresh color, a little bit more intense, you can see the cone is less developed and then as they age, this is what they turn into. Absolutely beautiful color. This is like my favorite color out in the garden. Then on this side here, we have one called Green Twister, which there's a few things I love about this one. I only have three, I think I've got five of the rest of each of the varieties, but I've only got three of this one. But you can see that the color here, that kind of pinkish purple, is kind of typical, like an Echinacea purpurea color. But the tips of each petal have that bright chartreuse green, which give it an added uh, element of interest. I also love that the cones, once they're fully developed, are huge. Huge. Look at this. This is kind of midway. They've got beautiful color. And you can deadhead Echinacea, and that will help produce more blooms. It'll make them a little bit more productive that way. But I value so much what the cone adds to the garden in terms of texture. And um, like it, I think it provides forage for wildlife, and I use them in flower arrangements. They're beautiful winter structure. For all those reasons, I like to leave the blooms on the plant or the cones rather, the spent blooms. All the petals fall away and then you're just left with this beautiful cone. This one here is called Granada Gold. Isn't that pretty? So it's just a sunnier version of the cantaloupe, I think. Really beautiful orange cone here. Kind of more of a petite plant, you can tell that. Like the, the growth structure, well branched, deep green leaves, um, much more compact than something like the Green Twister here. Now this one is called Delicious Candy. And I just like the striking pink. I think that's an eye catcher. I think it's really pretty and it has kind of like the same fluffy cone, not quite as intense as the uh, cantaloupe, but it's getting there. Let's see some of the older blooms here, like this one, you can see kind of take on that same sort of appearance. But I love that. I love how each stage of the bloom look so different. And then we've got Yellow My Darling, which these um, were in the greenhouse and I think that they need a little bit more sun. This is the color when they first come out and then they age to a really nice pale yellow. So the major reason I wanna use perennials like this out on the new property was because I wasn't intending on putting perennials out there at all. I wanted to keep that new area, just very natural feeling, but also very, very low maintenance because we have a lot of maintenance going on in the interior part of our garden. But I'm kind of uh, thinking along the pathway, along the walkways that we have out there to do a really pretty perennial border and then let the rest of the flower beds be more shrubs and grasses and things like that. Um, these type of perennials you know, Echinacea, Rudbeckia, I have Heliopsis out there, Russian Sage, Sedum, all of those kinds of things don't require maintenance throughout the season. Or, I mean, like you could deadhead these, but I'm not going to. Uh, they will just kind of do their thing, provide color, provide stuff for wildlife, and provide some amazing color without me having to be out there all the time um, managing them. They also can handle kind of crummy soil. They can handle clay, actually. They can do severe heat, full sun. They can handle drought once they're established. They're just all over, like all around a good place. Plant. I also found it interesting when I was doing some reading about Echinacea that its name is derived from a Latin word that means hedgehog and that's due to the kind of prickly, you can kind of see that texture, hopefully you can see that in there. It's kind of prickly and that makes it more resistant to deer. So if that's something that you deal with, this is a good one to plant. I, we don't deal with deer but I found it interesting anyway. <laughs> All right, so let's go out onto the new property and we're just gonna find wherever we think it looks nice and we're gonna put these in the ground.
got them all in the ground and I wanted to show you this first bunch of echinacea from this view. Aaron can't walk on the grass because it was just planted. It's just coming up now and it just watered so it's really muddy. But this is the actual view you'll have of the echinacea. This is the front of the flower border. About where I'm standing, I'm planning on putting some kind of architectural, maybe evergreen that doesn't get huge, but it will block the view from this side. Uh, but I think that these will look beautiful together. I actually put two varieties in the same spot uh, because I think they're close enough in color but different enough that it'll be beautiful. So we've got the delicious candy. There are five of them up here, zone four through nine. They grow about 16 to 24 inches tall with a fairly narrow spread, 14 to 16 inches. And I really want them to be a mass. So I planted them fairly close together. And then we've got the green twister backing the delicious candy. These grow up to 30 inches tall, 18 inch spread and hardy down to zone three. I think the mix of color is gorgeous, especially next to the denim and lace Russian sage. I think the color contrast is absolutely beautiful. I also have, I don't know if you can see from this side, but I've got uh, more echinacea. That's color coded, price is white. So it kind of goes along with the yellow, my darling. They're in the same series that I planted over on the other side that we'll look at in a minute. Then we've got the supreme cantaloupe. Now, this is also the back view of these. We're building the flower beds kind of opposite of how I normally do it. I mean, we've put in some big trees and evergreens kind of toward the back, but then there's a huge space about where Aaron's standing. And then this is where the edge of the, well, actually the edge of the flower borders here. I bumped these back just a little bit because they do grow upwards of 30 inches tall. So I thought they would be kind of a good back plant to maybe put some lower growing sedum or something in here. Um, and yeah, that way we'd have kind of a step down in height. They grow about 12 to 15 inches wide and they are a zone four through 10. And they're right next door to our uh, proudberry coralberry shrub that we just planted the other day. They're so pretty. So it makes me so happy. They're out kind of like in little islands around here, but just seeing this color is just exciting. We're in the opposite corner now, and that's where I put the Granada Golds and the Yellow My Darlings over there. Um, so we're actually looking at these again from the kind of the side, I guess, or the back side. This is gonna be the front of the border here where the grass is just coming in. The Granada Golds, they grow upwards of like 22 inches tall and 24 inches wide. Um, so these are definitely like, I maybe could have spaced them out a little bit further, but I think they're gonna be really pretty just in a, this huge gold mass over here. And these are a zone four through nine. And I do like, like these definitely look like they're very well branched and they'll be very full plants. And the last one, the yellow, my darlings, again, side view. This is the grass pathway, the front here. Uh, these grow upwards of 18 to 24 inches tall, 16 to 20 inches wide, and they are a zone four through eight. Um, I actually think I'm gonna broaden this uh, drift out a little bit. I think maybe even doubling the size of this drift over here because this is quite a large area. Well, they're all, they're all large areas, but I think I will like this kind of, uh, they age out to such a beautiful buttery yellow. I think I would like a bigger, drift of it. And this is right next to where we just planted the Miss Ruby Budlia the other day. And we've got the Spring Grove Arbovitis, which we were just looking at these and commenting on how good they look. We're so happy with them because it's been such a severe summer with wind and heat and then just constant dust blowing out here. I think they've put on growth. Do you think so? I think they look more robust than they did before. So I'm really happy with how these are going. And that's it, you guys. Five brand new varieties of echinacea that I think look wonderful out here on the new property. It's fun to see some color. It's also a really good time to go down and visit your local garden center, see what's blooming. Because right now is usually like we found uh, most of the varieties. I had the yellow my darlings on hand, but the other ones we picked up uh, because they just caught my eye. Uh, so that's what's so nice about going on a routine regular basis to check out what's blooming and that way you get some really pretty things to go in your garden that span the full season. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. More planting videos coming up really soon. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.